Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice, but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. Now this just shows a slide from data from Lilly, uh, or I mean from Abbott. And I wanted to show this slide because it shows the potency of the pawpaw compounds. The, the three compounds at the bottom, Asimacin, Bulanacin, Trilobacin, are my best compounds from pawpaw. And they're way active in cell cultures here at Abbott, way out at 10 to minus 5, 10 to minus 6 micrograms per mil. Whereas Adromycin's back here around 10 to minus 1, 10 to minus 2. So we're looking here at compounds that are like 100,000 to a million times more potent than Adromycin, you know, on a molecule for molecule basis. So they're extremely potent. I got data from the National Cancer Institute and their cell culture labs too, works the same. Next slide. To prove the drug resistance business at Wayne State University, uh, they tried it against uh, the M17R, that's a, a mammary tumor cell line, and the long bar going up reflects a, a very good potency of the pawpaw compound, and the little red bar at the bottom shows that adromycin doesn't work to kill those cells, okay? But over on the right, we took normal cells. These are epithelial cells from the GI tract. And we see there that adromycin is more toxic to normal cells than the pawpaw compound is. So why is this? It's because cancer cells are so voracious. Cancer cells, are full, they take in glucose 17 times faster than normal cells do, okay? And so they metabolize 17 times faster. So there's a therapeutic index of 17 there between a normal cell and a cancer cell. That's why we're not hurting the normal cells with pawpaw. We're in that index region, okay? And then with the, with the drug resistance here, those M17R cells have got that pump. And we're inhibiting the pump. So we're killing the cells. The next slide. Okay, then we went to some animal studies. And in this case, I got Upjohn's help. And I got Upjohn to help, not because of the merit of all my terrific research. No, because Pat McGovern, who worked there, was a Purdue alum. Mm -hmm. And that's how stuff gets done today, isn't it? It'll make you sick, you know? Everything's based on politics and who you know. So in this case, I knew somebody. And that's how it helped. So Pat found out that in mouse leukemia, the L1210 mouse leukemia, these mice will usually die in 10 days. If they lived 12 days, then you divide T over C. 12 divided by 10 is a T over C of 120, it's called. So we had 139 with Taxol. So they almost lived 14 days with the leukemia with Taxol treatment. But the dose of Taxol was 15,000 micrograms per kilo. The dose of Bilodicin up above was 50. So the difference there is 300 times. So the pawpaw compound is 300 times more potent than Taxol. But look at the weight change over there, grams per mouse. The Taxol mice lost two and a half grams in 10 days. They only weigh 25 grams. So they lost 10% of their body weight on Taxol. Those mice are sick. If you've ever taken Taxol, and there probably isn't anybody, maybe a few people have, okay? Makes you sick, okay? So Taxol is not a very good thing. But look at the middle compound. A 44% increase in lifespan for bilanosinone, and the mice gained 1.1 gram. They gained 5%. So on pawpaw, they're gaining weight. Next slide. Now, this, this study was done, again, by Pat McGovern at Upjohn with athymic mice. These are mice that, that are so inbred they don't even have hair. They're called nude mice, and they don't have thymus glands. So they can't reject anything foreign. So you have to grow them in a germ-free atmosphere and feed them sterile food and sterile water. But you can take a human tumor and put it under the skin and the tumor will grow. And in about 50 days, it'll kill the mouse. And so this gives you an opportunity to treat that mouse with something and treat a human tumor. 
right? So we took Gilda Radner cancer, A2780 ovarian cancer, and put it under the skin of the mice, and treat the mice for 10 days, and then measure the tumor sizes, and see if there's a tumor growth inhibition. Cisplatin at the bottom was the, was the positive control. We had a 78% tumor growth inhibition with cisplatin, but they lost about 5% of their body weight. Cisplatin is a nasty drug. People have to be taken kicking and screaming back into the doctor's office to get the second dose, because that makes you so sick, okay? But look at pilotolysin, which is the first compound I showed you. 75% tumor growth inhibition, pretty close to 78. And the mice didn't lose any more weight than the vehicle control cause. So, hey, this stuff's working. So this study was $66,000, information on that slide. Next slide. All right, these things work by causing programmed cell death. And what we see here is a DNA ladder of fragments of DNA. On the right, we see the standard of the DNA fragments. <clears throat> on the second from the right is cells, the DNA from cells that are killed with heat, which is called necrotic cell death. And same with the, the compound or the, the column on the left. But the second in from the right, the compound, the column you see, you see those little bars going up? They're very faint. But those are the DNA ladders that are formed from the DNA aces cleaving the DNA in the cells as they're being killed by pawpaw. And that's called programmed cell death. And that's a normal type of way to kill cells. We don't want to just kill the cells like burning them away and leaving a hole there. We want them to be resorbed back into the system. A good example of programmed cell death is a tadpole's tail. Tadpole develops into a frog. The tadpole has a tail, the frog doesn't have a tail. Where did the tail go? Did it fall off? No. It got resorbed back into the frog system. That's what we want cancer to do, get resorbed, okay? And that's what pawpaw causes, is programmed cell death. You may find some of Dr. McLaughlin's published work listed at the National Library of Medicine website, www.pubmed.org. Look for entries under the term acetogenin and his name, McLaughlin, comma, JL. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.